So, where do you get your information from? Um, I get my information from Global News, CNN, Yahoo. TikTok and newsletters. From either the news if it's on or Instagram. Um, I also get my information off Instagram as well as maybe Fox News. TikTok. TikTok and Instagram. Good morning, afternoon, or night, everyone, and welcome. My name is Gemma. And my name is Rihanna. And you are listening to the Dystopian Queens, where we are always staying, staying royal. royal. On today's episode, we are going to be taking a little dive into history and really understanding how relevant it is today. Now, the world's history is tricky and sometimes pretty hard to digest. I agree, but it is also important to learn about it so that we can avoid repeating it. I, and I think many other people, also find comfort in believing that our society over time is improving. Certainly, and I think we can both agree there has been some problems that are on the path of change, such as justice for racial equality, marriage equality, and equity in various parts of the world. But because these have maybe improved even a little, I think a lot of people are finding a little too much comfort in believing that these problems don't really exist anymore. That's why we should not only learn about our history to make sure it doesn't happen again, but also to identify when it does. Yeah, and that is exactly what we were trying to help with today, because as society develops, these harmful aspects can present in so many forms. And specifically speaking of today's focus, which is propaganda in the 21st century. Now, Gemma, what is the first thing you think of when you hear the word propaganda? Personally, I would say probably World War II, and maybe like the posters that were used to influence the citizens of countries like Canada in an actually extreme kind of way to encourage them to fight. And why do you think that is? Well, I don't think I've actually learned about propaganda, aside from this year, outside of my history classes. That is actually kind of scary, because propaganda isn't just a war thing, and it isn't just a history thing. Like you mentioned, it was in forms of, for example, posters and movies, etc., this was designed to target the citizens to make the information easily accessible for everyone. That is a key observation. Because of the fact that propaganda is so affiliated with the past in World War II, we find it hard to recognize it in forms other than media from the 1940s. Exactly, because nowadays the media that is more commonly consumed is online. I know for myself that a lot of the information I find on current events comes from Google or social media. Yeah, and all of these outlets, whether we realize it or not, are filled with propaganda. Yeah, and because we have become so reliant on technology, we have built this sort of trust with it, and it becomes harder to realize that whenever you actually pick up your phone, half the time, you're being fed propaganda. And to add to that, a lot of us don't realize that we are victims of propaganda because we are more used to the term fake news. Now, a short ad from the BC Children's Hospital Club at Riverside Secondary. In a couple of months, we will be recognizing May as Jean Month. This month is dedicated to fundraising for BCCH for the children who do not get to experience everyday activities. We ask that you donate what you can and wear your jeans this month to spread awareness. The propaganda we see today may not be as recognizable, but it is extremely prevalent especially right now with the situation I believe everyone is familiar with, which is the Russia and Ukraine conflict. This is a great example because the pro propaganda being spread on this topic is a huge problem and is shown in so many different ways. It is honestly astonishing how successful Russia has been with their use of propaganda because, well, as you mentioned, during conflict and war, propaganda is a commonly used tactic to improve patriotic thinking and as well as just justification of what their country is doing. Now you brought up a good point because propaganda, or what we can call fake news, is targeted mostly at people who stand by their country no matter what. But an even bigger target is those not necessarily being properly educated and are blindly believing anything. The issue with this is that the Russian government, referred to as the Kremlin, is continuously targeting all types of people in their population but have also been successful confusing the educated citizens who actually do their research. 
And that is quite terrifying, because the fake information they are putting out is so easy to get to and is put in social media like Google or the news, which isn't just confusing Russians, but also the rest of the population. And that is something I like to think about, because Google is a tool that many of us use to find information. Exactly. And government sources are supposed to be trustable sources. Very true. I mean, how are you supposed to trust your government when they are the ones spreading false news? That is when the tricky part comes in, because in that case, you really can't. Like, I know for us as Canadians, Russian-approved information would not necessarily be our go-to source. However, for Russian citizens, they are supposed to be able to trust their government. Very true, and this is important to realize because I am sure a lot of Russians do not want war, do not want these attacks on Ukraine, but they're not given the right information to form their own opinions because of propaganda being spread. So what kind of information are they exactly putting out? Because to my understanding, they are lying about their reasons for attacking Ukraine to justify what they are doing to their people and to like encourage them to fight. That's correct, but to go into the specifics, Russian propaganda is not something that is new. The Kremlin has in fact been feeding false information to their citizens for a while now to brainwash them into this sole perspective that Ukraine is harming Russia, and not the other way around. This is specifically seen with a video which was actually shown way back in 2014. Wow, so this isn't just wartime propaganda because they have been always trying to look like the good guys. Exactly. So what was this video of? This was a video of the Ukraine military who had allegedly killed a little boy. This was deliberately shown on the Russian news to make Ukraine look bad. However, there was never in fact a proper source or backed up information. Now that you mentioned Russian television, that is exactly what the Kremlin is doing right now by pinning the fall of this conflict on Ukraine. And to add to that, as me and you are younger, we look to social media sources primarily for our news. Russia has recognized that and has been censoring information on all platforms to remove anything that doesn't support the Kremlin's beliefs. But just because politicians use propaganda a lot during wartime, it's also still what they rely on to get into power. The use of propaganda is especially prominent in our society today through advertising and social media, and it has a huge effect on our decision making. Political ads are a great example for this, the same manipulation tactics still being used as with those old political cartoons from the 19th century. Yeah, attack ads nowadays can bear a strong resemblance for sure. Have you seen the one with Justin Trudeau's face on Veruca Salt from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? He's shown literally throwing the higher taxes at Willy Wonka, who represents Canada, in the video. Yes, I have. Although that one wasn't received well, it's surprising that propaganda like this is still being made by political parties today, and that less ridiculous propaganda is still relied on. Except now, it's even easier for it to be seen by everyone, and people can collect data to figure out what's going to work the best with what audience. Pretty creepy stuff. Definitely. One really interesting example of targeted propaganda that we see today, thanks to social media, is the Cambridge Analytical scandal. Because this consulting firm helped Trump to win the 2016 election through advertising based on the private information that he had gotten from up to 87 million Facebook accounts. Wow. They took people's characteristics and figured out how they could sway them to vote for Trump based on that. Areas with stronger support were shown ads with his image and information on polling stations, while those with less support were shown his celebrity supporters in an attempt to cater better to that audience and manipulate them. Yeah, and as you can see, the age of technology creates a lot of opportunities for propaganda to flourish. 90% of Canadians actually reported to falling for fake news online in a poll in 2019. So don't think that propaganda is something from our past. It's still a big issue, and we have to watch out for it. Now a short ad from me and Ed's. If you like great pizza, head on down to Mia and Ed's and treat yourself to a freshly baked, good quality meal. Bring your family and friends and enjoy the evening with delicious pizza from Mia and Ed's. Propaganda being created is something that most people don't have control over because it's an issue created by the establishment. That being said, the spread of propaganda and whether we fall for it are things we can do something about. I think that the main way to combat propaganda is with caution, because by being careful and trusting what you read, 
watch, or see online, and being aware of how you're taking information in, you can catch something if it isn't legitimate. Yeah, and it may seem like you can't make a difference in this issue, but by recognizing propaganda yourself, you could be stopping it from reaching others through not passing it along as the truth. Exactly, and we can fix the problems of propaganda if we all do our research and take the time to educate ourselves on topics instead of taking the information that is being fed to us on social media as the truth without thinking about it critically. Today we talked about propaganda in our current society and its impact. And we talked about how most people think of propaganda as something that was more relevant a long time ago, but it still has a big impact on our society today. That's why we want to make more people aware that it should still be a concern for them, and provide some ways that you can stop the spread of propaganda. The first thing everyone can do to stop this problem is fact-checking, instead of automatically believing information from a source that you don't really know is trustworthy. Exactly. Do your research to confirm that something is true before believing it. Also, think about where you're getting your information from. If your main source of information is Facebook or other social media, reflect on how fake news can circulate on those sites, and again, do your research. Finally, think about if certain sources have biases and are leaning towards a certain narrative that doesn't provide the whole picture. And that concludes today's episode. Thank you all so much for listening. And don't forget, always stay royal! royal.